This is a subarctic beekeeper, one of the many. It is September 28th. Woke up and it was 22 degrees Fahrenheit this morning. Whoa, it's coming. I swore I wouldn't do it. I swore I wouldn't do it, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm taking on someone else's bees for the winter, along with mine. Because going into winter with nine colonies just doesn't seem like it's enough. <laughs> so I am in town right now, and you might hear some in-town noises. I think there's a football game or something going on across the way. I'm at a friend's house, Apiary, and I've got these hives here. They're covered in wool blankets. I'm going to treat them for mites. They have not been treated all summer. And I don't want to risk them infecting my bees because I have worked so hard all summer to keep them healthy and strong and building up that vitilogenin, which is how I say it. However, a professor I know says vitalogen, but I know there's another in in there, vitalogenin or vitilogenin. You do you, it's up to you. I love this place. You can't see it, but there's hives and frames and slated racks and more frames and more hives and stacks and stacks of frames. And this big thing, this big white thing is from a beekeeper who went out of business. He retired. And so my friend bought all his stuff. The temperature is now up to about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And so I'm gonna treat these bees. Ay, ay, ay. They're everywhere. Tricky, tricky, tricky. I'm surprised. Maybe I shouldn't be. I kept the wool blankets on them all night. Keep them warm and insulated. And that obviously worked. Because they're crawling all over the place. You can't see it. I'll move the camera so you can see. But they're bearding all over. One thing that bees will show you is if you've got your boxes on incorrectly. If they're not on just right, those bees will squirm their way out. And there is a bunch of dead bees underneath the blanket. I will show you. Can you see them? So these are my hives, and I put my friend's bees in them. This one especially, this little blue nuke is really busting out. So what I need to do is get these bees back in their hives and treat them. I got someone else's mite wand because mine broke last night. Awkward time for it to break. These bees are hungry, very hungry. I fed them the other night, but they hadn't been fed. They've been consuming honey, which is okay, because that's what's good for them. They've been consuming my friend's honey. The other night I gave them some syrup with all the goodies in it, including some fumagellin to treat them for nosema. And right now I'm going to treat them for mites because I'm sure they've gotten them throughout the summer and all their travels. First I've got to smoke them up. It's going to be very hard to get them all in, which is a pain in the ass because the ones that don't go back in the hive are going to be flying around spreading their mites. I don't want to take these gals home until they're clean, so to say. Until they've been treated. Ugh. And I do want to take them home, but I don't want my bees to get infected with anything. So I've got a couple of colonies here that might cooperate with me. The sun shining doesn't help, but it's a good thing. I should have come earlier, but the temperature was too cold. 
I didn't want to treat the mites in a cluster. When you treat the mites in a cluster, the vapors don't get dispersed throughout the hive. I did not realize that this place here is so south facing and gets so much sunshine. And it really does. So these bees are warmed up. I'm going to get this colony right here. I feel like I'm catching fish almost. Let's try and get that blocked up. And I want to use a towel. I've got some aluminum tape on there, but it's not as forgiving for when I use that white wand. I'll see if I still have a towel in the truck from last night. I spent some of the evening last night looking at mite wands. I had one that lasted for many years. Loved it. Didn't give me any problems at all. And then I decided to organize my beekeeping equipment and lost that great wand. So I used another one that I had recently bought. And used it three times and it broke. Really frustrating. Can't have that happening. We have such short windows for everything. Stuff needs to work when it needs to work. Or please don't sell it to us. Or maybe we just don't buy it. It's hard to know. Up here stuff breaks. It breaks because of temperature. It breaks because of frequency of use, whatever, whatever, whatever reason there can be. But we do have some unusual circumstances up here. All right, so I've got three of them clogged. Bees flying all over. This is the big mama hive. I must not have put this lid on just exactly right. I'm gonna grab my brush and brush out some of these gals here been trying to get in and brush away some of the dead bees that are laying around that didn't make it through the night. This, just to get them out of the way and so I'm not squishing their little bodies as I administer treatment. Because then the alarm pheromone gets released and then everything and everyone panics. The least invasive this is, the better. Difficult to plug the little holes. These squirmy little creatures get in there. I took a few for the team yesterday. And I didn't even swear. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm grateful to my bee buddy, Don, who came over this morning with his mite wand because mine not working meant I was going to have to wait several days to get another one. If I didn't find someone to loan me one. Don was one of my first bee buddies. Really great guy. Great guy. Super nice. Very helpful. Helpful and kind. Same with Dale. These are Dale's bees. Dale runs about 60 hives in the summer. I can't imagine it. He's got bees all over the place at different locations. Hundreds of gallons of honey every summer. And Dale used to overwinter, but doesn't anymore. He doesn't have a facility for it. And the amount of time it takes he just can't do it. I'm going to try and talk him into it though. Because maybe with a little help he'll be able to do it and that would sure save him a whole lot of money. My brain is not a calculator but I don't know what 250 times 60. Fifteen hundred bucks in the spring to buy bees. 
It's a lot. It means you've got to sell a whole crap load of honey to recoup your costs. And I know Dale is a great beekeeper, been doing it for years, is extremely kind. He's done so much for our beekeeping community. Always willing to help, always willing to give advice to new beekeepers and old. <laughs> new beekeepers and seasoned beekeepers, they don't have to be old. I'm going to keep my smoker going and grab this battery. It is. Uh, uh, let me work those shoulders. This is a regular wand. My old one had a super long cord, super helpful, because I'd put it in my bee wagon and I could go some distance with it. The newer one I just used had a short cord, not helpful. I had not used that brand before. I've got a mask on now, which means I won't be able to see. I'm sure you've experienced it. I've got to get it over my face, my mouth, my nose. I should be wearing a gas mask of sorts, but I can't because then I really can't see. This is part of the good, bad, and the ugly. Foggy glasses. I wonder if I could take my glasses off. I'll try. Well, look at that, at least I'm not fogging up. Why well, do I have a mask on? Because I'm going to be working with oxalic acid vapors, also called wood bleach. It's the most effective, quick, and efficient way to kill varroa mites. Varroa mites are maybe our biggest enemy as beekeepers. They spread a lot of disease. viruses. They spread a lot of disease and viruses. I want to keep this going as a warning to the other bees to kind of keep away. I don't recommend you do this the way I'm doing it. Why? Because I've been doing it a long time. No excuse. It just takes one, one screw up to mess up the whole system. Mm -hmm. But having the experience and being willing to take very small risks, it's different for all of us. I've got my pants tucked in, I've got my jacket on, I've got protective gloves on. I'm gonna hook up the wand. I've got my oxalic acid vapor. And I'll start with this Ukrainian hive. Guess what? I took my glasses off so I can't see. Right, the positive is negative. This looks up like a car battery does. There's a cord, easy to trip over. So I have to be mindful of where that is. I do not want to inhale any of these vapors. It could cause permanent damage to my lungs. I also don't want to get it on my skin. We're going for three minutes in each hive. Three minutes for gas and then another three minutes of keeping the wand in the hive. The hives at the end here are going to have the entrance closed for longer than the end hive there. I'm going to try to even it out. Keeps the bees in there while the vaporization is happening. I find the most annoying part with doing this are the minutes I have to just sit here and do nothing. So when opening this, make sure you've got protective gloves on. PPE, as they call it, it makes sure you know where everything is. My battery is on top of a piece of plywood. Make sure you're downwind. You don't want that gas coming back at you. Now that I don't have my glasses on, I don't have protective eyewear on. 
I have a beekeeping class right now and the instructor's cringing and is probably struggling with their marking tool to not give me an F. I've got dog hair on the inside of my mask. I think I'm going to put those glasses back on. Some risks are not worth taking. I don't like that they fog up. I don't like the dog hair tickling my face. When I have a gas mask on, I can't breathe. So, there's already some vulnerability there. Got the glasses back on. I've got them down my nose like a old school librarian. I can hear the wand starting to sizzle. It means it's heating up. These bees are going to be pissed off. Very angry. So this happens kind of quick. There's normally a little measuring spoon in here. I wish I had three hands. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to drop this acid on here. And as you can see, the heat turns it to vapor. Go with my timer here and I wait. Ideally that entrance is completely closed. So one of the polystyrene negatives, and there aren't many, and I want to step away from there, is that when you have the entrance on there, entrance reducer, you can't get a wand in there. I want that closed up. Because any space available, the bees are going to leave. I would. Varroa mites. They are about this size. About the size of a fat squirrel, proportionally to the honeybee. And what they do is they suck the blood, or the hemolift, from the mite. And they feed off the fat body, which is the fatty layer that you find inside of a pupa like a nice juicy drone. They love the drones. So draining the blood, you're also draining the lifeblood, the health from the bee, compromises their immune system, makes them vulnerable to diseases, etc. Then the mites also they pass on viruses and make the bees more vulnerable to viruses and disease. Deformed wing virus, acute bee paralysis virus, the list goes on. I think there's about 10 of them. You'll find deformed wing virus in your hives. If you look, the bees are born with their, it looks like their wings have been crinkled. You'll also find other birth defects like missing legs and such. I can see some of the vapor coming out of the top box lid. That's okay. So these bees have not been treated all summer long. So they've gone many generations with the mites. Mites can reproduce exponentially. So every two weeks or so, they'll double their population. When bees are flying out, not as much risk. But when bees are in a colony or in a cluster tight, where it's nice and warm and cozy, those mites just explode and the viruses and everything else just get passed on to everybody. My bees at home, home apiary, are healthy, clean, strong. I've requeened a couple because I've had a couple of queens disappear. I'm reassured that queens don't leave the hive unless they're going to swarm or they're going to breed. And where do the disappearing queens go? My alarm went off. I'm going to pull this out. And I can show you why the mite wand can be a pain in the butt. See the vapors? See the dead bees? 
I always get some incinerated honeybees on here. Not good. Scrape them out. I hate to say this, but they smell like chicken. I'm going to hold this low and underneath this structure here so I don't breathe anything in. These bees are still coming out of this hive, so I really want to secure this entranceway. I'm going to move down to the next one. Still some vapors on there coming off. So what I'll do for this one is I'll keep it in a little longer. Although this is a small hive, a small nuke hive. I'm going to put this oxalic acid on here and it's going to start smoking. And see, this is where I need the third hand right now. I press it downward, down to the bottom of the hive where the metal grate is. In polystyrene hives, this wand will melt your, your hive. If it's a wooden laying straw, it won't melt. I forgot to hit my timer. This is what you do. You wait. Or you can cruise Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. YouTube. You can make a video. I'm going to go down through all these hives. There's some things I've been thinking about. Number one, buying a wand that is battery operated, not car battery operated, but 12 volts, 20 volt operated. You squirt it, you stick it in the hive, does its thing. You don't have a cord, you have to lug this 20, 30 pound battery around. Been toying with that idea, but they're for $500 each, pretty pricey. Another thing I'm wondering about is that these hives don't have any stores put up for winter. They weren't fed with the anticipation of them going through winter. So I was able to put extra stores that my bees had made in there, but it's not enough. So if the weather gets warm, the bees can make more stores. However, they've got a long ways to catch up. There's no brood in any of these hives. I do have some dry pollen substitute out here for them. I didn't expect it to be so warm and sunny today. It's been pretty gloomy. So I'm wondering, how are bees going to get through with no stores? And what can I do to help them make stores or provide stores for them? Also, is one mite treatment enough? I don't think so. And when I do the research, it says the maximum is once every four days. I'm wondering if I can do two treatments over a four day period. I can't find anything on that anywhere. And I, I don't think anyone would admit to doing it. I may have to do it because we don't have much time. We've got about two weeks, I think, before hive up or winter up, or whatever you want to call it. So the fact that we got to 22 degrees Fahrenheit last night means things are back on track for our weather. But this weather is not supposed to be like this. It should be cloudy, kind of gloomy, cold. I guess in the 40s means it's cold for some people, but not us. On to the next hive. These ladies are angry. Another thing about this, the wand is flat. The queen hangs out around the bottom of the frames. If I get her, she's gone and I'm queenless. Don't want that. If I spend the money and get the $500 zippy battery powered hive that goes in with a little straw like structure, stick it in and it vaporizes everything. Low risk, safer, 
less likely to hit the queen or incinerate any bees smelling like chicken. So these hives being broodless means that right now I don't have any winter bees. The hives at the home apiary are broodless. So I'll treat them today again, again as well. So hopefully these queens, even though they've had some tough times the last few weeks, I keep thinking they were starving, but they weren't starving. They were eating my friend's honey. So they were getting, they were fed. They were moving real slow though. So hopefully this queen will start laying again soon. She's got ample space. Only thing is she's got to be kept warm enough. So the inside of the hive has got to, the inside of the hive, the inside of the cluster, the queen, has got to be in the high 90s. 90 degree Fahrenheit range for her to be laying. If I take these bees back to my apiary, cover them with the wool blankets, keep them together so they're sharing walls, conserving warmth, that will certainly help. But it will not get them up to the 90 degree range when the ambient temperature is going down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Ambient temperature is the temperature around us. So what I might have to do is rig something up. I've got some things in mind to where I've got these hives separated from my apiary across an aluminum scaffolding, if you will. Aluminum is a great heat conductor. And I've got some seed warming pads, about yay long. Plug them in and when you're planting early in the season, you put them underneath your soil where you're setting your seeds in. It helps the seeds germinate, gives them some warmth. I may need to use those under these hives in order to increase the temperature so the queen will start laying before it looks like the second week in October. Second week in October it looks like the temperatures during the day are going to hit 32 degrees Fahrenheit freezing and stay there. That's when I'll put the bees in the bee barn. Once the bees are in the bee barn they're in total darkness. I've got a red light in there. Bees don't see red. I can turn the light on and see things going on. Dim. But the bees don't recognize it. They don't fly around so much. They're kept at a temperature between 41 and 43 degrees. No higher, no lower. I've had people from Canada tell me to increase that temperature. No. That is not working for us. We need to keep the metabolism of the honeybee very low. So they're still alive and able to shiver and keep the queen warm, but they're not so warm that they're getting excited and moving around a lot and consuming all the stores. Because when that happens, they run out of food and they have to defecate. They have to defecate, they're gonna leave the hive. If they have any Nozema virus, they're gonna spread that around. So thank you very much, Canadian people who mean well. But we know our stuff up here. We know what we need to do. Beekeeping is local. You got to do what works for you locally. Lots will apply because honeybees are honeybees, but some won't apply. I'm in hive number four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm adding six hives to my apiary. I just really, really have to do everything I can to make sure that they don't infect my bees because then I could lose all my colonies and my wonderful red queens. Well, I've started a Patreon account. If you're not familiar with Patreon, it is. Patreon is a web platform that helps creators, makers, whatever you want to call it, scientists, citizen scientists, artists, whatever, post things and you can become members or make donations to help people be able to sustain what they're doing. I saw that a friend of mine created a Patreon account. He didn't say anything interesting, but I knew about Patreon before from uh, my podcast. I, I listened to a couple of podcasts that have Patreon accounts and when you subscribe, you get special things, you know, like you get 
to maybe to talk to the maker or the scientist directly. You might get content that's not published online. You might get things early, you know, before they're posted up on YouTube. You might get them three or four days early. Patreon has moved to a subscription basis, I think, if I understand correctly. And so for tier one, tier two, tier three, you've got like $5 a month, $10 a month, etc. Interesting. We'll see what happens. If anybody decides to sign up for my Patreon account, then what I will do is send them special things electronically. And that money will help fund sugar, $500 vaporizer, Fumagellin, lemongrass and spearmint oil, time, lots of time, extra mice, microscope slide thingies, books, equipment that needs to be replaced, etc, etc. Be nice to be able to offset the cost. I forgot to hit my timer again. <laughs> my main objective for doing this is to document it and get the word out there. Not many people know about us beekeepers way far up north. And there's been the myth that I've talked about that's been perpetuated that Alaskans have to kill their bees, which is untrue. And I, I've also, just the other beekeepers I follow online and talk to, they, they seem to struggle during winter. Lots of struggles, not knowing how to keep their bees alive during the winter. And it, for us, if it works up here, it's got to work down the lower 48. There's got to be differences in hot climates, of course. But insulation works whether you're trying to keep things warm or trying to keep things cold. In terms of temperature regulation and such. But if we can keep our bees alive and healthy for a period of six to seven months a year, when they're unable to access any natural forms of nectar and pollen, then that is freaking cool. Dr. Medhat Nasser, who's a Canadian beekeeping wizard, told me once that we probably have the most difficult environment at least one of the most difficult environments in the world in which to keep bees during the winter because of our temperature extremes. We have super, we can have super hot summers and we can have extremely cold winters along with darkness, no opportunity for a cleansing flight for the bees. So the way we prepare them makes it so they don't have to defecate for that long. Working with condensation, precipitation, temperature, humidity, dew point, thermodynamics, thermoregulation, R value, etc. Spot a wasp. So wintering up here is not difficult, but you got to know how to do it. And more importantly, you have to know why you're doing what you're doing. If you know why you're doing what you're doing, you'll be able to make the decisions for yourself, depending on where you're at. Knowing the biology or the science behind it, makes a big difference. I've got two more hives. I'm going to move my battery over. If I had a super expensive <laughs> 20 volt vaporizer, I wouldn't have to do that. Using my J hook Pull this out, pulling my head away. This entrance is super small. This wand is super wide. I want to crunch that in there because I want to keep those vapors in there for a while. You can see them coming off the wand, I think, huh? This next colony is a big one. These bees are Caucasians. They're not my favorite old world carnelians, but I like the Caucasians. They have extra long tongues which helps them reach into extra deep flowers. Mm.
I hope and hope the queen is not close. Yes, down downwind a little bit. I can smell the chicken smell. At least we want to create some distance here. So after this, now that I'm in town, I'll go and get some supplies. And then I'll head back to the farm and set up an apiary space away from mine, the aluminum. You can see I've got a leak right here. It's another polystyrene thing. Burn spots, leaks, etc. We'll figure it out. So I'll set up another apiary area and set up those soil warmers because I think what I'm going to do Oh, I want to stay away from the gas, the vapors. I either have to get in front of it or I have to get behind it. Which means I need to move this. I think that what I'm going to do, I think that what I'm going to do is have that apiary ready at our farm. And I think I'm gonna treat these bees for mites again tomorrow. I'm gonna to check the mite boards. People say to look at the mite boards count, figure about what your mite load is, to figure out about how many mites are in your hive going into winter. And people have allowable mite loads. I have never thought it was okay to have an allowable mite load. Why would you want to have any mites in there? They're doing damage, spreading disease, etc. So my preference for a mite load is zero. So I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to take the risk and treat them again tomorrow and then bring them to our farm tomorrow. So that'll be two mite treatments in two days. Check the mite board, see what kind of mite drop I have today. Typically there's a mite drop today and there'll be a mite drop in 24 hours, which is typically bigger. People will criticize me for doing two mite treatments in two days. That's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Eh, they're gonna criticize you for anything. Know why you're doing what you're doing. Somebody's gotta take the risk. Beekeeping will take over your life. It just will. I want to say if you let it, but you're either going to do it really well and work with your bees, work with what they need, or some people keep bees and try to fit the bees' needs into their needs. I do not find that that works very well. I need, you know, days off, time off, etc. You know, if we have a temperature drop or something happens, I gotta take care of the bees. So there goes that day off. Take care of each other, take care of yourself, most importantly. Take care of your bees. Ukraine is winning. This video is copyrighted and all rights reserved. Take care of yourselves. Bye.